Hey everyone, this is Shivam Chandok from PyImageSearch.com and today we are going to be looking at image data loaders with PyTorch and specifically we'll be looking at various functionalities that PyTorch provides to structure our data loading pipelines such that the data samples in our data set can be easily accessed by our deep learning model during both training and inference. All deep learning models require large amounts of data during training and thus it becomes very essential to structure our data set and set up our data loading pipeline in such a way so that the data can be seamlessly integrated with our uh, deep learning model and today we are going to look at how uh, pytouch classes and uh, functionalities can enable us uh, to do so so let's get started as you can see the pytouch image uh, data loader folder here and uh, inside this folder we have our flowers data set that will be using for the purpose uh, of this tutorial. The flowers data set consists of uh, flower images from five classes. That is daisy, dandelion, uh, roses, sunflowers, and uh, tulips. And uh, as you can see, these are all images of uh, roses. And uh, these are images that belongs to the daisy class and so on and so forth. And uh, we also have the pie image search folder, which uh, contains our config file. The config file, which we'll look at later, contains the various parameter settings and configurations that will be required throughout the tutorial. And uh, here we have our uh, three main uh, scripts, uh, which are the uh, build dataset script, uh, which uh, will allow us to structure our dataset into a training set and a validation set. And uh, then we have the uh, load and visualize.py file, which will help us to load our training and validation sets with the help of PyTorch dataset class. And we'll see how we can access samples from our data using PyTorch data loaders. Next, we also have the built-in dataset.py file. And here we'll uh, understand a functionality that PyTorch provides where we can use the PyTorch API to download and load various commonly used computer vision data sets like MNIST, C410, C400 and how those can be uh, directly downloaded and uh, loaded with the help of the PyTorch API. So now let's look at the code. On the left hand side we can see here is the our image data loader uh, folder and we have our flowers data set with all the five classes here and uh, here is our PyImage search folder where we have our config.py file. So as we can see in the config.py file, we define the paths for our flower data set and also the MNIST data set, which we'll see uh, later. And uh, we also define specific paths for our training and validation sets uh, on line six and seven. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, default image shapes, which we'll be using to resize our images so that they are in a format that our model can easily accept. And at the end, we have the default uh, parameter settings for batch size and validation split which is the fraction of data that we'll be keeping in our validation set next we look at the build dataset.py file as you can see we start by importing the config file from the image uh, py image search folder and uh, we import necessary packages like imutils numpy shutil and os which will help uh, in configuring our file system as we'll see later and we start by defining a copy image is function. This function will come in handy when we uh, want to copy a certain fraction of our data set into a training set and a, a validation set, as we will see later. The function, as you can see, simply accepts uh, two parameters. One is image paths, which is a list of image paths. And uh, the other is a folder name where it will store uh, the given uh, image paths. The function first checks if the folder name given already exists and if not, it creates a folder by that name. We then loop over uh, the paths in the image paths list. And one thing to note here uh, is that the paths uh, in the image path list are of the format root directory, uh, class name, which is the name of the flower class and image ID dot jpg. So in the next three lines, uh, we separate uh, the image ID, which we store in the image name variable and the class name, which we store in the label variable. And we create a new uh, label folder name, which is a path that is created uh, by joining the input folder parameter and the class label to which the path belongs. 
we then create a new folder with the label folder name that we just defined above here and uh, finally we uh, define a path which for the image id that we had stored on line uh, 21 and uh, we create a destination path by joining the label folder path that we had defined with the image id and then uh, simply we use the sh uh, util uh, package to copy the path into the destination folder as we can see here so uh, all in all uh, what this function has uh, done is uh, it takes paths in the image paths list one by one and uh, it uh, creates a new folder with the given folder name and which is provided as a parameter initially and uh, simply stores the image paths in the uh, destination folder now we are ready to see how we can structure our data set into the training and validation set as you can see here we define the image paths uh, list which is a list of all the paths in the root directory of the flower image folder that we had seen earlier and after that we use numpy uh, here to shuffle the image paths so that they do not appear in any specific order of classes and finally we have to define a fraction of images that we'll keep aside as the validation set so here uh, we define a variable called val path length uh, which will be the length of our validation set and this is defined by taking a particular fraction of our image paths and the fraction is defined by the config.val split parameter which we had seen earlier the training path length is simply the length of all paths subtracted by the number of paths that we had kept for the validation set here and after that we simply grab the training paths into a variable called train paths and the validation paths into a variable called val paths here finally uh, since now we have the path of images uh, which will form the training set and the validation set we simply use the copy image function and store the training images into a folder defined by config.train which will be the train folder and the validation images into a folder defined by config.val which will be the val folder now we can see this function running and how it helps us to structure our data set so we simply have to use the command given in the usage here and we copy this command here and we run it so as you can see our code is loading the image paths and then copying the training and validation images here and if you see carefully here this generates the train folder here and as we can see now we also have the val folder here where all the val paths that were defined by this uh, variable have been copied into the val folder and as you can see the training folder has again five classes which is daisy dandelion roses sunflowers and tulips and they have the training images that we had kept aside for the training set and similarly the val folder will have the same five classes with a different set of images that we had kept for the validation set here so now we have seen the working of the build dataset.py file which helps us to structure uh, the, our flowers dataset into two different datasets that is the training dataset and the val dataset and next uh, we'll look at the load and visualize.py file and uh, we'll see how we can load uh, the training and val splits of our dataset with the help of pytorch dataset class and how we can access the samples uh, from the data set with the help of pytorch data loaders now we will discuss the load and visualize.py file as we can see we start by importing the config file from the py image search folder and in addition to this we also import some important packages and modules such as image folder which will later help us to read images from the disk the data loader a class which will help us to define pytorch data loaders over our data sets and help us to easily access samples from our data set the transforms function which will help us define a set of data augmentations and transformations on our input samples the matplotlib library for uh, plotting samples from training and validation batches and the pytorch library for providing data set and data loader related uh, functionalities we start by defining the visualize batch function which simply takes a batch of data the list of classes in the data set and the type of data set which is training or validation 
and it simply helps us to visualize and plot the images of a batch. As we can see here, it simply loops over the batch size of the batch and grabs one image at a time and it uh, converts the image into a channel last format and also unnormalizes the image so that it uh, comes back in the range of 0 to 255. Here we simply grab the label ID of the image and map it back to the class name of a particular data set. And here we simply show and plot the image with its label. Next, we will discuss a set of transforms, as you can see, which we define here. PyTorch uh, provides the transform uh, function so that we can define uh, data augmentations over our input images. Data augmentations are usually uh, defined to enhance the generalization capabilities of a model and reduce uh, overfitting so that it does not overfit to certain specific artifacts in our data set and it generalizes well uh, to all images. So PyTorch provides some standard uh, data augmentation transforms as we can see here, such as resize, which will simply resize our images in the given input height and input width and horizontal flips and uh, vertical flips which simply flip the image horizontally and vertically with a probability of 0 0.25 as defined here and another transform is random rotation which will simply rotate the images by an angle uh, defined by the degree parameter note that pytorch also provides various other data augmentation transforms and we can easily uh, look at these in the pytorch documentation here we use uh, some of the most common data augmentation transforms that are used in various deep learning pipelines and data loading pipelines. We use the compose function here to consolidate all the transforms that we want to apply on our images. One thing here that we can notice that we have an additional transform called transform.2 tensor, which is usually a transform which has to be there in all uh, training transforms defined because its uh, main function is to normalize the input PIL images into the range of 0 to 1 and convert the images to PyTorch tensors which is important so that the model can access these images in the form of tensors. As we can see in the validation data set, we simply define the val uh, validation transforms as the resize transform and the transform.2 tensor. Uh, since uh, the resize transform will enable us to get the images in a format that can be easily accepted by the model. Note that uh, since the validation images will be used at inference time, we usually do not use other kinds of transforms such as horizontal flips, vertical flips, because we don't exactly know what kind of transforms will the test images have and we directly use the test images which are there in the validation set or the test set without using these more complex transforms. We now define our training data set with the help of the image folder module, which simply uh, takes in the root directory where the training data set is present and also the input training transforms that it has to apply to each of the samples of the training data set. And similarly, uh, using the image folder module, we also define the val data set as we can see here. Now we have defined two data sets, which is train data set and val data set, which are uh, PyTorch data sets. And each PyTorch data set has len method, which can be used to find the number of samples in the data set. As we can see here, len train data set will give us the number of samples in the training data set and len val data set will give us the number of samples in the validation data set. Once we have created the data sets, uh, we are ready to pass these data sets into uh, the data loader class to convert them into PyTorch data loaders, which will help us to access samples from these data sets uh, easily. As we can see uh, here, we pass the train data set to the data loader uh, class of uh, PyTorch. And we, in addition to this, we also pass the batch size and uh, the shuffle argument. Note uh, that the shuffle argument is uh, usually uh, true during training because we don't want the images to appear in a particular order according to their classes uh, because it is important for gradient based optimization approaches that the images appear randomly from different classes and the batch is not 
in a format where uh, the images from a particular class appear together and then the uh, images from the next class appear together. So uh, we keep shuffle equals to true in our uh, training data loader. And similarly, we also define our val data loader with uh, the val data set and the batch size for the validation set. Uh, we have to note that the data loader class is simply a wrapper around the data set and it will help us simply to access the samples of uh, the data set which can then directly be passed to our deep learning model and train it. It is worth noting here that each of the data loaders, the train data loader as well as the val data loaders are Python iterables and they can be converted into iterators with the help of the iter method. And then we can access samples from the train data loader with the help of the next method, where the next method will return the next batch each time this command is executed. And the same thing we can do for the val batch. So here, uh, with the help of the iter and the next method, we get a train batch and a val batch. And uh, simply with the help of the visualize batch function, we visualize the train batch and the val batch uh, with the following two commands. And uh, now we can simply run this file with the help of the usage command. And as we can see here, the training data set and the validation data set have uh, 3,303 and 367 samples. And uh, the training and the validation data loaders got created and the visualization of the training and validation batches uh, is here where this is the train batch as we can see that uh, randomly the data augmentations that we had defined uh, have been applied which include uh, the rotation of the images by an angle of 15 degree as we can see in daisy and uh, tulips and we can also see uh, vertical flipping in this tulips image and similarly, we can also uh, visualize the validation batch as we can see here. So the validation uh, batch has the following images. As we can see that the horizontal flip and vertical flip and rotation transforms have not been applied here. Uh, this is mainly because of the reason that in the validation set, we only use the resize and the tensor transform, which are the basic transforms. And uh, because of that, in the validation set, all the images are displayed as it is. So now we'll look at uh, the built-in dataset.py file. And uh, here we'll see how we can directly use the PyTorch API to download and load some of the commonly used computer vision data sets. And for the purposes of this tutorial, we uh, use the MNIST dataset, but the same procedure can be used to access uh, common computer vision data sets like C410, C400, etc and more details uh, about these uh, datasets and the PyTorch API can be found in the PyTorch documentation. So as we see here, we start by importing the config file from Py image search folder, and we also import the MNIST dataset from the torchvision.dataset module, which uh, provides access to these commonly used computer vision datasets. And we also import the data loader class and transforms and the matplotlib library as we had seen in the previous Python file as well. Next, we define the visualize batch function, which is similar to the visualize batch function that we had seen previously in the load and visualize.py file. The only difference here is uh, since we are working with the MNIST dataset here, we load the images in CMAP equal to gray mode. Since MNIST is a grayscale dataset and it has a single channel images, uh, which is in contrast to the flowers dataset, which is an RGB dataset, which has images with R, G, and B channels. And uh, as we had uh, seen previously here as well, we define the transforms. And here uh, we define the basic two tensor transform, which is used to convert the PIL images to PyTorch tensors and normalize them in the range of zero to one. And with the help of the MNIST function here, we provide the directory where we want the MNIST dataset to be downloaded. And uh, train equals to defines that uh, here we want to load the training dataset of MNIST. And download equal to true means that uh, 
we want to download the MNIST dataset directly using the PyTorch API. And uh, the data set should be loaded with the transforms that we have defined above. And similarly, in the validation set data set, we make train equal to false, which uh, signifies that here we are looking for the validation set and not the train set. And again, we set download equal to true because we want to download the MNIST uh, validation set here. And uh, as we had seen earlier, we simply pass these data sets into uh, data loaders to create the train data loader and val data loader here. And simply the train data loader and val data loader can be converted into iterators and can be iterated through with the help of the next method to get train and val batches, which can simply be visualized using the visualize batch function here and here. So uh, let's simply run this file with the help of the usage command. As we can see, with the help of the PyTorch API, we are uh, directly able to download the MNIST dataset and the dataset has uh, started downloading here. So first, uh, as we can see, the training set will be downloaded and then the validation set will be downloaded with the help of the API that PyTorch provides. And this will take a few minutes. Once the training set is downloaded, we can see that the validation set is getting downloaded and this will take a few more minutes. And as we can see, the both the data sets have been downloaded and now we can see the visualization of the training batch where we can see images from MNIST of uh, the different digits. And uh, similarly, we can also see the images from the validation batch here. So now we have uh, completely looked at all three Python files. In the build dataset.py file, we structure our dataset into the training and our validation sets. Then in the load and visualize.py file, we used PyTorch datasets and data loaders to load our dataset from a disk and access samples and then visualized uh, training and validation batch from our dataset. And finally, in the built-in underscore dataset.py file, we saw how we can directly use the PyTorch API to load some commonly used computer vision datasets. So this completes the code walkthrough for the image data loaders with PyTorch tutorial. It will be great if uh, all of you can take some time understanding the working of these data loaders, the working of the code, uh, going through the blog post and running the code and uh, playing around with the collab notebook accompanying this blog post. And uh, once you have familiarized yourself with the working of all these aspects, I'm sure uh, you will be ready to use PyTorch datasets and data loaders in your own deep learning projects and uh, deep learning pipelines. Thank you for your time, everyone, and we'll meet next time.